Well, we're learning a program called Pro Tools. And what exactly are these tools they're talking about? Before we chop this guy up and rearrange him and all that, let's be sure we know how to navigate around these modes. And let's begin with the F keys. So F1, 2, 3, and 4 are how we move through the various Pro Tools modes up here in the upper left-hand corner. So I'll explain Shuffle and Slip in the next movie after this one. Spot we'll take a look at in its own chapter, and Grid is something we use in music editing when we're trying to do precise editing on the beat. And in Grid mode, there's Absolute and Relative. So the short version of that is Absolute means I want this to start on bar one, beat one, or bar 65, beat one. It's absolute and relative. Really has to do, if you think about pickup notes, something that goes one, two, three, ba da da ba, right? Before the downbeat, you want it to be relative to the downbeat as opposed to precise. So that allows you to slide it 37 and a half bars to make it happen exactly where it wants to later in the song. So that's the difference between absolute and relative. So that's F1, 2, 3, and 4. One more time, F1, 2, 3, and 4. Move you through those different editing modes. Let's go back to slip. That's F2. Okay. Over here, there are some zoom tools, which I rarely use, frankly, because as you see, we can do a lot of the zooming with that bracket command. But we'll take a look at these a bit later as we work in different types of projects. We get to the zoomer here. Normal zoom and single zoom. Normal zoom allows you to do what we're doing where you reach in here and take one look. And then you would zoom back out. See, I'm already using my bracket to get back to where I want. So single zoom is just kind of a one-time peek inside. So normally you have this zoom tool if you're using zoom at all. I think I will convince you to use your brackets mostly and not use this zoom tool at all, but we'll see. We've already seen the smart tool with these three brackets attached, but let's take a look at what each of these does individually. So I'm going to go to the trim tool, which is this first guy, and it has a little arrow under it, just like the zoomer tool did. And underneath that means there's more tools down here available. How do you get to the more tools? Well, you can click and drag and select them. Or the trimmer, you can hit F6 and scroll through the various tools. So you kind of want to know which icon you have showing so that it's the correct tool for what you want to do. You can actually select a different type of tool and then have the smart tool have a different set of tools than the ones we just worked with in the last movie. So. I'm going to F6 my way back to the regular trimmer. Now, what does the trimmer do? Well, it's a good thing we have undo on here because I will shorten the length of this ring out by just grabbing here and pushing and shortening it. And now I've made it about the same length as the last guys. So not recommending that you do this. Probably better that you just watch me so you don't have to undo what I'm doing. So I'm going to let go now, and it has just truncated that, right? It's trimmed it. It's a trimmer. So now I have, and it just cuts off in a very unnatural sort of way. Well, fortunately, I have undo, right? Command Z or Control Z on a PC, and I could do that. Or the nice thing about non-destructive editing is if I trim this off, I can trim it back. I'm clicking and dragging, and I can make it that long or that long and push it all the way out to the end and bring all that back. So non-destructive editing. I can make it shorter, but I can get it all back. Great. Okay. This is the region selector, ah, but we don't have regions anymore. So it's now called the selector tool. So you can select clips with it. You can select multiple clips with it. I just want to select pieces of this. I can select across boundaries here. I can select, for instance, from this peak right here to that peak right there. So it's how you select things to work with in Pro Tools. Notice there is no little arrow here. It just selects. Here's the grabber. 
And the grabber is the hand that we used earlier. And the grabber will let you grab things and move them like that. And I'm going to undo that, Command-Z. It also has separation grabber and an object grabber that we'll take a look at later on. So it has a little arrow down there too. And in one of the preferences, we say if the grabber is selected and I double click like that, I can name a clip. So we saw that in the last movie. Over here is the scrubber, which is kind of handy. If we have a chime here and... Okay, so I can scrub backwards or I can scrub frontwards. So that lets you kind of peek inside and scrub exactly what you want. Now, can you record this scrubbing? No, because you can only be one place in the timeline and the transport would be rolling like this and you wouldn't be able to scrub if you were recording. But if you had a second inbox and you routed the output of one into the other, then you could do that. And that's kind of a fun thing to do, although we can do some of that in MIDI. So over here on the end is the pencil tool, and there are lots of line forms and so forth that you can draw with your pencil tool. So we'll get to that down the line. So you can move through. I'm going to hit F5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10, you can move through these tools with your F keys. Remember one, two, three, and four do the modes. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 takes you through the tools, or as I suggested, six and seven together, or seven and eight together, and get the smart tool. And I think you'll find that the smart tool is the one you'll have just on a daily basis. That's the one you'll work with the most. So if you were wondering what the tools part of Pro Tools is, those are the tools. Now, in the next movie, we'll explore non-destructive editing and how that's so powerful.